The 1970s unquestionably was the decade of fashion. Some of the most famous styles started in the 70s, like the afro, which is still very popular today. The 70s is most definitely the epitome of hip. Obviously, we all know what fashion in the 70s was like. Giant pants, afros, and massive shoes. But there was much more to it. So if you'll let me take you on a journey deep into the 70s, I will open your mind's eye. <clears throat> now, if you went back to the 70s and asked somebody what material what their, what their clothes were made of, 98% of the time, they would say it was made of polyester. The reason why polyester was such a big deal in the 70s is because polyester was the choice for bright colors. Bright polyester clothing was everywhere, from a young hip teen to a man in his 60s who still thinks he's got the goods for it. But you know what really goes with bright polyester clothing? Bell bottoms, aka elephant pants. Yes, these big old trousers worn by almost everybody, except for the old guy who knows he's past his prime. Bell bottoms were pants that would flare out at the end of the pant leg, which usually ranged from 12 inches to 2 feet in diameter. Bell bottoms were first introduced in the mid 1960s, then the style died off in the late 60s, but in the 1970s the pants were booming in popularity. It seems like everything was large in the 70s, first bell bottoms and then platform shoes. Platform shoes were high heel shoes with massive soles. The soles of the shoes sometimes got up to 14 inches tall. People really got carried away with these shoes. Platform shoes were also worn with bell bottoms. They just naturally go together. Big pants and big shoes. Now we all know what kind of hairstyle Jimi Hendrix had. Yes, the afro. The afro was a very famous hairstyle in the 70s, which was more commonly worn by African Americans. But anyone with curly hair had, an af had afros. Many wearers of the afro had a goal. The goal was to see how large they could grow their afro with their afro pick they kept in their ba back pocket. Let me tell you, people really took their afro seriously. But not all fashion in the 70s was about dressing in large bright clothes. There was a style meant for fashion and luxury. It was known as the leisure suit. The leisure suit worn by men was a suit that included a shirt-like suit coat with matching pants. The 70s man would wear a button-up shirt that usually had a really large collar or a turtleneck underneath with an unusually tall collar. Now, I think we've discussed enough fashion. Let's move on to the fads of the 70s. Back then, the fads were pretty crazy, ranging from pet rocks to some pretty hardcore disco. I'll start by talking about the pet that needs absolutely no requirements and is easily the most boring pet in existence. It's the pet rock. You are probably wondering why somebody would come up with the idea of a pet rock. Surprisingly, it was very popular. It originally started out as a joke in a small pet store, but then the owner, who was in advertising, talked them up and they took off. Pet Rocks made the owner into a millionaire. Enough about Pet Rocks, moving on to the one thing that is a type of music, a kind of place, and a dance. It's disco. Disco is usually the most well-known music from the 70s. The first thing that pops into your head when you hear disco is probably a disco ball. But it was much more. Believe it or not, most people, to most people, it was seen as a reaction against the domination of rock music back in the 70s. But most people just wanted to get their groove on. Another big fad was roller skating. In the 70s, many people would roller skate at home with family and friends. The popularity grew to a large scale in a short time. Rich club owners started to open skating rinks for people to come and skate. Many of the skating rinks combined skating with disco so people could skate while getting their groove on. Yes, it was quite a lively time. Life was large in the 70s. 
big clothes, big shoes, big hair, big dance floors in America.